Hello and welcome to Learn ADS in 5 Minutes. In this tutorial, we will talk about how to bring in an external time data file for transient analysis. This technique is going to be very useful for you if you have any external time file either produced by an oscilloscope measurement or uh, from a third party you know, time domain simulator which you want to bring into ADS to run transient analysis. Now, before we start, subscribe to the channel, click on bell icon to enable all the notification. And after you watch the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues. All right, so let's go and talk about this interesting uh, topic, which might be very useful for your work. Now, to illustrate the concept, I have prepared this very simple schematic where I have one transmission line as my DUT or the channel which I'm trying to analyze. Now, to do the job which we are looking um, to do in this video, there are a couple of methods. From the sources time domain library, you can see you have a data set source or a VT data set. So that's one of the ways to bring in an external file, read it as a part of data set, and then use that data set in this source. The second way is to use a user defined you know, voltage source or current source. So both of these have their own equivalent current source. So uh, technique will be exactly same whether you are reading a current data or the voltage data. Now let's first talk about uh, VT data set. So in this technique, I will have to modify the file which I have either measured or generated from any third party simulator. The file format is very simple here and that's called TIM file format, which is basically an MDIF format, which is multi-dimensional data format. Now in TIM file format, the three main important things, you should have a begin time data header and the end statement at the end of your waveform file, and then a percentage with time and voltage attributes. The hash T, second voltage R, and the reference impedance, this is an options line and it's optional. You don't need to have it. Now, sample TIM file can be seen here where you have this begin statement, percentage time and voltage statement, and end statement. And in between, you have your voltage data. Another thing to remember, the file which you're trying to read in should have an equal time step, which automatically will be the case if you are using an oscilloscope measurement based equation. But sometime if you are creating the same waveform from a, a third party spice tool, it may not have a you know fixed time step. So you need to take care while generating the waveform. Now using this technique, whether it's a PWL kind of waveform or any custom waveform which your CERDES or ASIC might have produced, we can read in very, very easily in ADS. Now even if you have a header named T or V, when you read it, it will become time and voltage. That's how the typical you know, format works with time. And that's what is mentioned here in the documentation. Now let's look at one example of this kind of file. So here I do have a .txt file. And if you open that file in a notepad editor, you can see I have provided the same header and a percentage time and voltage. And then you have this data. And finally, at the end, you have an end statement. So this file is generated using an equal time step, and that's what we are going to use and read it into ADS data set. So the way you can read any external data into a data set is by opening the data display window and then opening this data file tool. Now, once you open this data file tool, you can read data file into data set. That means you can create a data set based on that file. So here, let's browse to my desktop where I have that file, which is silicon output. And now that file format is going to be MDIF and the subtype is TIM MDIF. So this we already talked about. Now the data name I want to use to create, I'm going to use the same name by which I already have a data set is silicon underscore output. Now, once I try reading that file, the first thing, obviously, it is asking me to overwrite, which I would like to do. Now, it reads the extension of that file, and if it is not .tim, it issues a warning saying it's txt. You want to proceed. Obviously, I want to proceed, say yes. And now, file read is successful. 
So now the data set of silicon underscore output has been created in our workspace. Now before we use that into our simulation, let's see what data we have read in the data set. So we'll insert a new graph and now you can see time and voltage, which are the two columns in that file. So if I plot voltage on a graph, you can see the waveform data. And let's zoom into this waveform so that you can clearly see what kind of data I have. So this definitely looks like an ASIC output with certain pre-emphasis built into the voltage waveform. Now this is going to be used as a source using this VT data set. We double click on it, go to data set and browse to the data set which we just created. And in the expression is basically the variable which I would like to use and that's called voltage which you just saw. And with the simple setting, I do have an expression and the data set associated. Now here you can see out, which is basically output of this source and the V out, which is output of this circuit and then I probes connected at both places. Now, when we run simulation, you can observe the waveform before the channel and after the channel and their corresponding eye diagram is very, very simple. Now, because I just talked about the file has to be fixed time step. Similarly, this transient controller should be set at fixed time step. And I already talked about this in the transient simulator basics video. If you haven't watched that video, please go ahead and see that. So it's set to fixed time step. And here the time step is set exactly what you have in the file which you are reading. So this is very, very important step to take care to make sure you have the right waveform being read. All right, so this data set step, hopefully it was simple enough. The another approach to do the same thing is by using user defined. Now in user defined source, instead of operating as a standard parameter entry mode to type in your own equation, we will switch it to file based mode. And if you have watched my previous videos, the file based mode works with data access component. That means I need to browse to that file to a DAC. We can do that very simply by typing data to get data access component block into schematic. Now this data access component is going to refer to the same file which we just read as a data set silicon output. And the file type obviously will be TIM MDIF file format. So once we link the file, we go to independent variable because remember in this data set, we have time and voltage. Now we need to tell DAC which is the corresponding independent or X axis variable. And that variable name is time and the value obviously is time. So once we do that, we simply add it here and that's it. So now you have link to that file. Now, whatever you are reading from that DAC, we can assign to this component here by referring to DAC1, which is name of this component. And the dependent parameter file name is very simple. It's voltage. Apply, click OK, and you're done. Again, remember, there is no difference whether you read the waveform like this or you first read it in data set and then use it for simulation. As you would see once I run simulation, the output looks exactly the same which you just saw. So two choices depends on you which technique you would like to use to read an external data file, whether it's a voltage waveform file or a current waveform file. So that's all for this video. I hope the content was useful for your application and you would be able to use it for your own simulations. Best of luck designing your circuits and keep having fun. Thanks for watching.